little bit about some of our observations from a few years of completely digital data recording at Pompeii, as well as um, another project that Lee's worked on in Sicily. So I'm going to be reading the paper, but um, and hopefully Lee might be able to comment if we have questions or can engage in discussion later. So the rapid adoption of digital recording and processing technologies in the field, such as the tablets you can see stacked here, has both streamlined data entry processes and increased the avail availability of data to the members of archaeological projects that employ these methods during fieldwork. While digital practice in archaeology is surely not new, as the other participants in this session and at this conference can attest, technical technological advances such as wireless connections, hardware designed for harsh conditions, and extended battery life, just to name a few, have made near real-time access to project data by all members of a team a feasible reality. This digital revolution in data collection and management has improved efficiency at the point of discovery during data processing and throughout later analyses and interpretations. Much of the research to date on the application of advanced technologies in the field has focused on the implications at the point of data collection, including the ability of new technologies to facilitate a reflexive method um, to provide data to aid interpretations directly in the trenches, an approach likely familiar, again, to many in this room. However, much of the research we have encountered has been theoretical, either discussing uh, the potential of digital practice or presenting results from small-scale field tests or based on limited contact with the active application of these technologies in the field during the course of a long-term field project. Some of the most thorough scholarship to emerge on this topic has discussed the benefits of providing excavators with access to specialist analyses and process data at the travel's edge by members of the Chetelhoyuk team, including the important work by our sessions uh, organizers in an article just published last year. One of the most effective means of sharing project data with excavators has proven to be the implementation of workflows which include immediate or real-time access to a project's database, which is now frequently facilitated by the use of tablet computers in the field. Although this sort of data has long been accessible in the field, databases has, have also been perceived as too complicated for excavators to navigate. And as Tringham observed when discussing Chetelhoyuk's database in a 2007 article, the fact that something is accessible does not ensure that it will be used. At Pompeii, we witnessed that the ease of access via tablets in the trenches and the labs, not just the availability of the data, ensured the persistent use of the project's database by all members of the team. We believe that this broadened and more immediate dialogue between archaeologists and data has changed how our, how our project thinks, works, and collaborates. How these new technologies and workflows have impacted discussions and interpretations in the trenches has been discussed before, for instance, by Tom Franklin, who visited our project in Pompeii and has presented ethnographic analyses at past CAA meetings on just such a topic. Franklin and others have provided an important edic perspective, which rightfully focused um, on observations that may be difficult for an insider to perceive. Such studies have significantly informed the design process and have helped to shape good methodological practice. Today, we are excited to contribute our own observations from within the Pompeii Archaeological Research Project, Porta Stabia, um, henceforth PARPS. As data curators, um, we are somewhat removed from excavation in the trenches, but still familiar with project workflows. And we present various observations from an emic perspective, and we try to explore what we were able to perceive internally about this new research methodology, about how the project was structured, and about how people communicated. While member while members of the PARPS team have described both our primary digital data collection methods, as well as how digital technologies have changed the way we curate and analyze data at prior CAA meetings, in this paper, we focus on the impact that digital technologies have had on collaboration at PARPS, both the means of our communication and the subject of our conversations. By discussing complementary experiences observed at the American excavations at Morgantina, uh, Contrada Agnese project, henceforth AEM CAP, we demonstrate the wider application of such considerations. We then attempt to contextualize our observations by analyzing select scholarship from other fields of research, um, specifically human computer interaction and small group dynamics. Prior to 2010 at PARPS, a traditional workflow was followed in which paper context sheets, mylar drawings, and specialist records 
produced during the season were scanned in the field, but rarely processed and made digitally accessible until team members returned to their home institutions, often several months after the end of the excavation season. Furthermore, there was no regular system by which information was communicated between working units, for instance, from the trenches to the lab and vice versa. If conveyed at all, data was discussed on an ad hoc, irregular basis, and communication between these groups commonly concerned updates on task completion and the location of the primary physical records and data. Since the 2010 field season, PARPS has employed a fully digital data recording process, reducing the traditional and repetitive practices of transcribing, tracing, and digitizing data initially recorded in physical formats. During the excavation seasons, all data in this paperless system were digitally distributed to everyone daily, providing all members of the project with unprecedented access to near real-time data. While born digital data still clearly require supervision and curation, this digital workflow facilitated immediate access to data and metadata that was impossible to achieve with traditional paper-based practices. This increased ease of access meant that trench supervisors no longer needed to wait to speak in person with ceramicists or numismatists, for instance, who often worked in far-off storerooms or labs off-site to learn about the status of, an, of artifact analyses and to view reports. Likewise, because trench supervisors recorded when the excavation of context was completed in the database, specialists did not need to seek out members of the excavation team to find out when context could be considered closed so that materials from those contexts could be examined as a complete assemblage. Furthermore, trench supervisors had the ability to flag whether or not the material from a given context should be given priority. This digital cue from the trenches enabled specialists throughout the season to target objects from important contexts and manage their time appropriately, returning their information promptly to the travel's edge, as it were, to aid in the guidance of continued excavation. Our digital methodology in this way removed the necessity for constant face-to-face -face contact between team members. Both specialists and excavators could access the data they needed to accomplish their specific tasks without needing to speak directly to others involved in producing and processing their data. Constant availability of digitally curated data fostered an environment where asynchronous communication between team members was possible and in some ways preferred. However, while the benefits of this asynchronous system were immediately apparent to us, we noticed that the ready availability of this data actually encouraged face-to-face -face conversations among team members working on various aspects of the excavation. While direct communication was no longer required for information to be conveyed in a timely fashion, team members were keen to discuss the impl implications and interpretations of these data with one another. For instance, while contextual data was readily available to ceramicists working in the storerooms, they were nevertheless encouraged to visit the trenches and discuss the contexts that they were considering as they saw progress from the trenches being entered into the database. Similarly, while data produced by the registrar, who documented the initial qualification and quantification of excavated small finds, were readily digitally available to the teams in the trenches, supervisors would frequently visit the project storerooms to examine finds more closely or to discuss patterns that had been observed and digitally documented by the registrar during initial processing. While these types of interactions could also, of course, be facilitated by weekly trench tours or other structured interactions, we noticed that these visits more directly address patterns and interpretations which, um, which were recognized in the immediately available data than in the past. Synthetic trench tours and other formal meetings, often presenting interpretations and conclusions made in the field by the excavation team were no longer the most common means by which various project members interacted. Rather, collaborative interpretation was occurring earlier, less formally, and more efficiently in this process. We have also made similar observations regarding communication habits and team tendencies during our several seasons of post-excavation processing. Unlike during our excavation seasons, when team members were spread out across the site, post-excavation has brought a smaller team of specialists and scholars to the same large storage facility. All members of the team now work more or less in close proximity to one another during each summer field season. Although all data are readily accessible in the database, individuals will still often seek out each other um, or other supervisors, excavation supervisors, in order to discuss specific questions they might have face-to-face -face and collectively analyze data they might be considering. 
Thus, although our digital approach certainly facilitates asynchronous communication and access to data, members of our team have consistently demonstrated a conspicuous preference for direct interaction when possible and task appropriate. The decreased need to communicate about mundane processes facilitates increased time for co-located face-to-face -face communication that is substantive in nature, corresponding discussion about patterns in and interpretations of data encourage collaborative synchronous analysis. Many of these observations at PARPS involve groups familiar with both the primarily paper-based old recording system and the new paperless process. Because paper and paperless techniques were never employed simultaneously at PARPS, it was not possible for us to directly compare the effects of going digital with the paper-based approaches. At AEM CAP, however, in 2015, both digital and paperless recording techniques were simultaneously employed in different trenches. While most of the specialist teams at AEM CAP were paperless, two trench supervisors were responsible for direct digital data input, while one maintained a paper notebook and a binder full of context sheets. The supervisors in the paperless trenches remarked at the end of the season on the utility of having the ability to work with the project's database in the field. In this way, trench supervisors had immediate access to data not only from earlier seasons of excavation, but also from specialists who were simultaneously processing small finds, pottery, and environmental material in storerooms and labs removed from the excavation site. Important data fields, once populated, were digitally highlighted so that meaningful data were easily discernible. The supervisors with access to the database also reflected on how rewarding it had been to see the progressive processing of the materials from their trenches throughout the season. Being, being able to tell on their own that a given coin or shirt had been cleaned and dated encouraged these supervisors to visit the storerooms after hours to examine these artifacts with conservators and specialists, and once again, an increase in face-to-face -face analytical and interpretive discussion was observed. In contrast, the supervisor of the paper-based trench seemed isolated from the rest of the team. At the end of the season, he admitted that he was unaware of the status of the material that he had excavated, although he noted that he was quite interested to include numismatic and ceramic analyses in his final trench interpretations. Although he interacted with project ceramicists occasionally, for instance, during group pottery washing sessions, he was not as keen as the other supervisors to discuss his assemblage with the processing specialists. These observations at AEM CAP again suggestively illustrate the power of the asynchronous sharing and immediate availability of data uh, to facilitate face-to-face -face dialogue and collaborative analysis. These experiences from our field research have led us to become more interested in exploring how changes in project workflows, which have implications for communication patterns, could go on to impact interpretation and consensus building. Although familiar with some of the HCI literature, we wish to explore whether our observations were supported in other sorts of communication studies and small group collaboration research in an attempt to better understand what we had observed and what we could expect moving forward. In this way, we hope to employ technological solutions in a more informed way in the field. For instance, computer-supported collaborative work studies, which have grappled since the early 1980s with phenomena that are similar to what we observe, have observed in the field. The proliferation of instantaneous asynchronous communication networks, such as email, were changing workspaces much in the same way that immediate data access has led to changes in what information mem members of our team were now sharing and accessing. While much of the CSCW research trended towards design, a significant branch of scholarship was developed um, in ethnographic analyses of collaborative environments, similar to the ethnographic research presented by Franklin and others at prior CAA meetings. Our experiences illustrate the formalization of asynchronous communication methods, as we, for example, saw changes to workflow management and the employment of document repositories in the form of the database. But while these asynchronous aspects were facilitated by the introduction of our digital workflow, our real-time interactions, as we have discussed today, also transformed. One of the most significant changes to these real-time interactions that we have observed was the increase in face-to-face -face interpretive discussions, whether in the trenches or in the lab. These discussions were inherently collaborative, and although they may not have consistently led to a conclusion in the field, the goal was always interpretive consensus. Studies on consensus building in academic communities, notably those by Patrick Grimm and others, have shown that in some cases, uh, a scientific community may learn more when its individual scientists share less. 
However, we wish to suggest that the social structure we experience in archaeological fieldwork um, encourages collaborative interpretation, and thus is a workspace which benefits from increased dialogue, as well as the immediacy of data access across the board. Specialists and excavators on our projects continued the practice of co-locating to discuss results face-to-face, -face, even when they could write text or call using the tablets um, and a variety of other technological um, equipment available in the field. This is one place where our observations appear to be supported by those um, found in other general communication studies. Olson and Olson, for instance, conclude that distance matters and that co-location is often preferred for collaborative interpretive discussions, while face-to-face -face communication proves less desirable for the exchange of quantitative and qualitative data. Lowry found that for small groups, the quality of communication after measuring factors including appropriateness, openness, richness, discussion quality, and accuracy was significantly higher for face-to-face -face conversations than virtually in any means with computer-mediated communication support for small groups. Um, additionally, uh, this is just background, this slide isn't related to um, the publication I'm discussing. Additionally, Baltz found in a meta-analysis from the early 2000s that computer-mediated communication may be an efficient and rapid means of disseminating information, but the research to date suggests that it is not the most effective means of making group decisions. These observations match the preferences expressed on our projects, an implicit endorsement of the higher quality of conversation in person over communication taking place only asynchronously, with computer-mediated computer -mediated communication being preferred for exchange of data or information, not discussion, interpretation, or analysis. It appears that while our digital workflow facilitated immediate access to data and the ability to communicate asynchronously, our project team somewhat naturally reframed their workflows to communicate in more ideal ways, as the HCI, CSCW, and other communication studies fields would have recommended or expected, rather than just employ the most technologically advanced means because it was there. While we are inspired that we observe improved communication strategies in the field, we believe that we have only begun to scratch, and we know we've only begun to scratch the surface of the literature concerning group dynamics and collaborative workspaces. We look forward to pursuing the subject further, both in discussions here and also in our future field projects and research. From our admittedly qualitative and anecdotal observations, we have developed the opinion that our digital workflow, thanks to the introduction of tablet computing, has had a positive impact on discussions and communication on our projects by allowing us to increase the immediacy of data access across the team and to communicate via whichever synchronous or asynchronous format is most beneficial to the task. We have seen technical or administrative conversations about where data is being kept or the status of certain procedures and analyses replaced with substantive conversations interpreting, discussing, and otherwise engaging with the patterns and data which are only visible thanks to the database as a primary repository for the project's data. People may speak less often at times or more often given different contexts, but if we are to think about those of us working beyond the travel's edge, we too are more engaged with the excavation process and more involved in seeing the bigger picture of what is happening on a day-to-day -day basis in the trenches thanks to these more inclusive practices. In conclusion, we hope that our observations about communication patterns on our archaeological projects and its theoretical relevance to research from other fields will form the basis of more intentional practices of inclusion and discussion in response to digital methods. While neither synchronous nor asynchronous approaches are ideal alone, when afforded the ability to access data and communicate with the database and with each other using both methods, we believe archaeological practice becomes more efficient and results in more complete, well-debated interpretations. Thank you very much.